Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is March 18th, 2019, and hopefully your hangover is not too bad as you watch this. I'll try not to be so loud. Uh, of course, it was St. Patrick's Day this past weekend, if you haven't figured it out, so congratulations on surviving another one. Hopefully, again, you are not feeling too badly this morning. It is a Monday, you need to be back at work. Uh... We have no real kit announcements to talk about. There's nothing new, to, so to speak. So it is just kit releases for this video. Uh, I'm very interested, however, to see what will be coming in the kit announcements in the near future. Because at this point, we have everybody's uh, May releases, right? And in May will be the Shizuka Hobby Show. Which, of course, is the big hobby show, really, of the two. I mean, All Japan Model and Hobby, very large show held in the Tokyo Eye, which is that weird upside-down pyramid building. But the Shizuka Hobby Show is in Shizuka. And for people who don't realize, every Japanese kit manufacturer, even if they don't make their kits in Japan anymore, pretty much has a presence in Shizuka itself. Um, you know, always Tommy makes their kits in the Philippines. A lot of people make their stuff in in uh, China and things like that. I think Fine Molds might be the only company that still legitimately tools all of their kits within Japan. But be that as it may, uh, that show is much, much larger because, well, in order to go to the show, you just have to go across the street, basically, for all of these companies. So we see a, a much larger presence of also a much more vibrant uh I want to say civilian, but, you know, a hobbyist show attached to that. There's a very large model, not a contest, but a display. We talk about this every year uh, with this, where we here in the United States, we have model contests, right? You show up and you're head-to-head -head with somebody else, and eh, unless it's an NNL type event. Uh, their type, of, their idea of a model display in Japan is pretty much your club would buy a table and all of your club members would display their models. And it's much more of a NNL Esque type thing instead of individual people, it would be you know South Hills has a table, Three Rivers has a table, Buckeye has a table. Insert your club here has a table, and you just show up as a club uh, or a group of builders, depending on how the case may be. If it's not a formalized actual model club, and they display that way, it's a very much a social interaction type of deal rather than it being any type of even any type of judge contest. I don't believe there's even like a best of show award or anything else like that. It's just honestly just a meeting of of modelers just hanging out and getting together. A lot of these people probably, much like an NNL East, NNL, uh, Toledo, GSL, whatever, they only meet that one time a year because it is the big draw that brings everyone together. So that being said, uh, you know, what is in store for Aoshima? What is in store for Hasegawa? Fujimi, of course, does not attend uh, either Shizuka or All Japan because they go to Wonderfest. We already know what they're doing for this year. It is the Suzuki Jimneys, along with whatever else they may uh, come up with during the uh, intervening months. But Hasegawa, we know there's that Toyota Starlet, that third generation Starlet. They showed it like a shadow board of it back at a show in, I want to say, December. And it said it was supposed to be out in March. If you've watched this show for nearly four years, we've been knowing it, because it will be four years here in another couple of months, uh, you know that new tools are never on schedule. They say, hey, we're going to put it out here, and then pretty much maybe Hasegawa is probably the, the one company that maintains the closest reality to <laughs> to their uh, you know wish list type of release date. Occasionally things are late here or there. The Starlet, of course, is a brand new tool, so it's you know probably a little further uh, removed. It's much easier to get out a modified reissue on time than it is to get out a new tool, because the modified reissue, well, it was tooled when the new tool was done, so they're just running the tool at that point. Um, I wouldn't expect to see a lot out of BMAX necessarily at this show, which is not a bad thing, because we saw so much information get dumped at the Nuremberg, uh, Nuremberg, so I almost said Nuremberg, Nuremberg Toy Fair, right? Got so much stuff out of them. So I would expect their table to be much more focused on displaying uh, prototypes and test shots and things like that to show so show progression with those announcements to show that the kits are still coming. Uh, just on their Instagram this week, uh, for example, BMAX showed just a chassis inside a body shell upside down in their little weird little build tray that they use uh, for their pictures they display online. And it is the Mitsubishi Lancer, that the four-door uh, rally car from, I believe it's the 1982 Royal Auto Club, the Rack Rally, as it were. So that kit is, you know, done, basically. We're building up the display model. So, or we, me, they, I'm not having anything to do with it, but they're building up their display model for it. Uh, so that is obviously on its way. Uh, the only thing I might expect to see at 
Shizuka necessarily would be like a modified reissue announcement that we haven't heard about. Uh, just this past, well, actually it was last week, I forgot to mention on the show, Spot Models showed that they were going to be doing the British Touring Car Championship Toyota Carina, which is the way the Toyota Corona, the JTCC car, which is uh, see what she had right here. They're going to release this in its British Touring Car version, which if you have one of these kits, you are legitimately the least surprised person on the face of the earth after hearing me say that. Because if you have one of those kits... Uh, you know that there already is a Karina grill in it that isn't used. There's several other Karina specific parts that aren't in that kit that are not used in the building of the Corona. And you know that the chassis platform itself is pre-drilled. Basically, the holes are flashed over on the entire thing, and you have to drill out the mounting holes for the pedals, the pedal, uh, the footrest, the seat, uh, the, the fire bottle, the, the shifter, and all that stuff because it is specific to which way. So basically, the only thing they need to do with that model is throw the left-hand drive dashboard into it, uh, possibly uh, reconfigure the way the shifter is, because I think the shifter is specific to the JTCC version, and then uh, throw another set of wheels in it, decals, ta-da, Carina. So, you know, not a surprise. That will more than likely, if if the cruise doesn't come out beforehand, the, then the Carina is probably going to be the next reissue. Because right now, the next modified reissue we're going to see, of course, is the B Max or the B Max. Why? Well, just that was unnecessary reiteration. The BMW, haha, M3 with the Fina and the Jägermeister for the 1992 DTM season. That's going to have the new, a uh, new set of wheels in it, the new rear wing for the Sports Evolution 2 model, and of course the new decals involved. So. Really, for them, I would expect to see, you know, things that were in rapid prototype, I would expect to see them in injected molded things. Things were injected molded, I expect to see built test shots or be on, you know, announcing kit releases and things like that because uh, there's quite a, they have a backlog at this point of things that they can release. So I'd be very also very interested to see if we see any of those easy model versions of the cars they're doing to see what exactly you're going to get. Uh, Content-wise, with that, what about it is so easy? Uh, because it doesn't appear that it's going to be a snap tie. It doesn't appear that it's going to be uh, like pre-paint or anything else like that. They're just going to reduce the parts content. And you know, if you have some of these B Max curbside kits, you're already like, how do you reduce the part content even more than it is right now? Maybe one one piece roll caging kind of thing. I don't know. So I'm very interested to see what uh, lies there because they're doing several subject matters that would be very, very interesting to me, but I would hate to see them be, yeah, crappy models, you know, be deflating as it were. Uh, so, you know, very interested to see what's going to be happening with all that. Very exciting. You guys who know me personally know I feed on new information. I'm very, I, I, I'm very much a, everything is past me once I've seen it kind of person when it comes to this hobby. Uh, I very much look forward to getting new kits. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but information wise, when dealing with like preparing for this show, uh, it's always, always, obviously always what's next, what's next, what's next for me, because, uh, that's what makes the show what it is. If I was just telling you about stuff as it happened, you probably would have already heard about it. And, uh, yeah, it'd be pretty boring. The fun part of that, this is, you know, the, the future look to me anyway. You may agree, you may not agree, but with that being said, let's jump into kit releases here because there have been several uh, this week. Uh, one here domestically, the last round two kit for the month of March, and then uh, the rest of the stuff, of course, will be overseas. So the one kit that we had left out of round two is this, the AMT GMC Astro 95 semi-tractor. Now, I know there was a small vocal minority out there that was very, very disappointed that this does not come with a turbine engine in it. It's only ever been released that way one time. The original, original release of this kit. This box art mirrors the second release of the kit in, uh, I think it was the late 1970s. 1978 sticks in my head, but that may just be irrelevant to the actual uh, kit at hand, but I think that might be when the second release was. Uh, expanded decals, that sort of thing. Otherwise, this kit is identical to every GMC Astro out there, so you may or may not be interested in it for the actual kit itself. Me personally, I've told you guys this before, I'm happy to see this come back because, yes, it is the sister kit to the Chevy Titan. Yes, it is effectively only GMC difference between the Chevy and the GMC, uh, but I missed out on the Chevy Titan. This kit at my local plastic pusher is like 30, I believe it's 30, $2, or maybe $35. It's somewhere in the mid-30s. 
with the hostess van being like two dollars more, probably because of the hostess licensing, or maybe because there's actually technically more parts to the hostess truck with the box. I don't know. This is two hundred fifty plus parts as it is. They might be very very comparable parts content wise. But uh, obviously, you're not licensing a major corporate brand with this tractor, uh, so there may be that be the, the case of why it's two hours more. Maybe because really this is the Chevy Titan with just the GMC parts added to it, so it's a little less to rerun something that's been run relatively recently. I don't know, but be that as it may, I'm happy to have this because I would like this kit, uh, this cab over GM, these, this GM heavy duty truck line cab over. I just don't feel like paying the $60, $70 the Titans are going for on eBay anymore. This will be $35 and, uh, you know, done out the door. So happy to see that come come back just personally. Um, you know, again, your mileage may vary. Overseas, uh, I'm going to mention this kit real quick here. Normally we don't do Italeri releases only because Italeri's releases tend to be reissues of other things, right? Italeri has all of, for the most part, all of the ProTar tools, all of the SE tools, all of the, uh, oh, there's somebody else in there that I'm, I'm forgetting right now. But, uh, you know, they have, basically, if it was made in Italy, they have, and it, the tooling exists for it, they have it. So a lot of the stuff you see reissued uh, is just bringing something back. One of the things that was reissued this week globally from Italy was the uh, Alfa Romeo uh, Giulietta Spider kit. And that was a ProTar kit. That was made, I want to say, in 1995. That's what the most. What, that's what Scalemate says. That seems too recent. I want to say that was a 1980s kit. It is semi full detail in the sense that it has an engine and things like that, but it's a very very basic kit. Um, but you know, it's a reissue of a Protar kit. There's nothing really to talk about there. And I know we do reissues of all of everybody else's kits, but. Italy is just one of those things where it's very hard to determine like what their distribution is. Like if I say, oh, the Alpha, if this kit is out. And then you can't find it, then you're all like, yeah, it's not out, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. So I'm going to mention this only because this is a legitimately brand new, 100% brand new tooling uh, kit. And it is this, the uh, Volvo FH4 Globetrotter XL. So this is the brand new, the 25th anniversary issue of the Globetrotter Volvo uh, truck. It is obviously a European truck, it is not a United States truck. Uh, the VN780 does come in a Globetrotter XL trim, which is a very, very, very... Uh, probably overpriced option, but you get a whole heck of a lot of bells and whistles in a North American-based Volvo truck with the Globetrotter name. Uh, this is full detail kit. This is basically the follow-up, if you will, as far as tooling and design concepts and everything else like that to the uh, Mercedes-Benz Gigaspace. Uh, the the uh, I can't think what the heck the actual name of that truck is right now. The Actros. The Actros Gigaspace. This is the Volvo version, basically. So this is, like I said, another completely and totally 100% brand new uh, truck kit from Italeri. It is nice to see them doing these trucks this way, as opposed to just putting them onto a generic chassis with the wrong engines and the wrong suspension setups and things like that. You got out of the Italeri kits a lot in the 2000s and early 2010s. Um, this does come with some photo etch for the grills and things like that. So it's pretty, you know, nicely done kit as far as it looks, you know. Uh, but this kit was released in Japan this week. I've seen it is released in Hong Kong as well. Uh, it is all over Europe. Uh, I do not see anyone carrying it in the United States as of yet, but it was just released like this week, so it may not actually have shown up in stores and vendors yet. But I'm going to just take the flying leap and tell you guys about it just because if it's not in the United States, well, there are plenty of other places to obtain it from. Uh, Japan wants $75 for it. I see it online in Europe in the mid 60s to upper to to lower 70s a couple places in looks like great britain that will ship it for free from the uk to here for 77 for somewhere between like 68 and 70 dollars i'm going to assume that in a hobby shop setting this is going to run somewhere in the low 60s to upper 70s depending on how screw job your local hobby shop is on pricing uh you know there are some places that only sell at retail pricing and the retail pricing on this is probably close to 80 dollars uh Realistically, this is probably a upper sixty dollar kit. Um, I don't know. I, I still keep saying I want to get one of the Giga Spades, one of the Actros, but I still haven't picked one of those up yet. So I can't say that. Oh, I want to get this too. But I am interested in it just because it is a new kit. Um, the Giga Space seems to the Actros seems to be a fairly well liked kit in terms of assembly and things like that. It doesn't quite have the um, 
less than solid reputation of the earlier Italeri kits, uh, truck kits. But then again, a lot of the reputation about those Italeri truck kits is the fact that they are just generic. <laughs> you know, they're just uh, everything rides of uh, one or two various different chassis, and therefore none of them are really correct. It's just, oh, this is a Volvo body on an old, you know, Freightliner chassis. This, this Freightliner is on an old Volvo chassis and blah, 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 blah. So uh, that is out there for the folks that are interested in trucks outside of the United States. And that'll take us to the Japanese uh, releases. So first up, and we're only going to mention this in passing because you guys already have seen the fact that I have one from North America and so does pretty much everyone else at the time. But if you're waiting for the kit to be released in Japan to get it for like the $29 that it costs over there, the Tamiya 4 GT. So fully new detail kit, blah, 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 four-piece engine, crying, whining babies on, on forums about that. But be that as it may, that kit is out there. It remained to be seen now that this kit is available in Asia widely. Whether you know, like, do we get a carbon fiber set for it? Because there's a few pieces on the outside of it. Uh, Jonathan Feeden's Garage is doing a build up of it right now, so you can sort of see the pieces that need to be carbon fibered. Um, he's doing it like with paint rather than actual decals. Be interesting to get a carbon fiber decal set for it. It's, it seems like it would be pretty small. Uh, if you didn't go on the full-blown carbon fiber trim package that they offer for the car, as well as getting Hobby Design or Studio 27 or somebody to do photo etch for it, because there are a couple of cases where uh, the choices that they've made with this mirror the choices they made with the Acura NSX where there are, hey, put this decal on this clear piece of plastic, and... No, stop that. <laughs> so, uh, again... That is out there, but chances are, if you're here in North America, you already have one. So, we have one release from Fujimi to talk about. They only have two kits coming out this month, so this is the one of them. And this is a reissue of the Ferrari uh, 250 GTO, uh, probably the best 250 GTO available. It used to be the crown held by Revelle of Germany, but this kit is newer and uh, better than the Revelle of Germany one. This kit doesn't, this box art, as it's shown, doesn't specifically say anything about it, but this kit is the special edition kit that comes with the turned metal aluminum wheel lips and the photo etch uh, spokes. So this has the, that that is why this kit specifically costs about $20 more than the regular 250 GTO kit. This is effectively like an Enthusiast Series kit. It's not in the Enthusiast Series lineup. You don't go looking for it because it doesn't uh, exist that way. But it is almost 200 parts. Full detail engine, all that sort of nonsense that you would have got with that. Granted, the, you know, the Enthusiast Series kit's like 250 pieces. So 188 lower parts content. But uh, this kit does, by the way, come with the injected molded uh, wire rims. And they're probably one of the nicer sets of wire rims other than maybe the Tommy at Jaguar uh, four-door. So you sort of get two for free here. Like If you decide that you don't want to use the PhotoWatch uh, wheels and want to use it on something else, you still have a set of wheels in the kit to build the actual model or vice versa. You decide you want to take those uh, injected molded uh, wire wheels and put them on something else. Uh, you know That is an option as well. Uh, it is sort of up to you guys to figure out if a set of wheels are worth $20, but I think that's basically what they cost... Uh, when Fujimi runs them and sells them separately, because those kits, these, those wheel set was available separately for people who wanted to upgrade their standard kit. So that's back out there. Good to see. Uh, it, the injected mold parts are pretty, pretty nice. But I think the why you know the, the it's, it's it's a very easy system. It's very very detailed instructions with it. Uh, basically, you take the the front wheel lip, you put two pieces of photo etch into it. There is a uh, a metal inside or maybe plastic inside piece that is the wheel hub itself. Uh, you ins you uh, insert two pieces of photo etch onto each side of it, put it into the front wheel hub. There's a spacer, another piece of photo etch in the back wheel hub. So everything is centered onto that wheel hub, right? You don't have to sit there and try to figure out how in the world am I supposed to get this all to line up in a straight line. And with that... Everything is sandwiched in there, so you don't really necessarily have to worry about gluing it together. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how well 
that the wheel holds together because I don't have that set. Like if you put it all together and puts the you know the two wheel halves together, will the wheel half stay in the wheel friction wise without glue? But it's much easier to uh, you know put a couple of dabs of CA on the rim itself and glue the rim together inside the wheel than it is to you know glue. F Anybody who does photo etch knows gluing photo etch together is like one of the most, ten the most tedious parts of doing anything with photo etch. So you don't frost it, or you use a glue that doesn't hold it, and all that sort of things. That seems to be a very, very nice way of dealing with it. It also looks like you don't have to like sit there and twist all the spokes around to get them, you know, to uh, be angled off of the center. It looks like you just slap them together. So with the wheel spacers, it sort of spaces the spokes apart, give them a little three-dimensionality to it. So that being said, on to the folks over at Aoshima. A couple of these things are just straight reissues, and then there's the one... Uh, Rebox kit from last month that has finally come out. The reissues are these, the Nissan R34 Skyline GTR top secret version. So this, of course, is a tuner version of the, of the you know, their standard R34 kit. Uh, this was released a little while ago, a couple, three months ago, getting a reissue because it sold out. Also being reissued this month, the Subaru Sandbar High Roof 4-Wheel Drive Best car vintage GT kit, but it did sell really well because they threw all of the extras into it. So you have the roof rack with the the canoe and and the harpoon gun because apparently you're going to harpoon something out of your canoe uh, out of your inflatable uh, raft rather. So I mean, hey, you know, <laughs> I think that was probably depending on how much kick that harpoon gun has. It seems to me it would flip the raft over. But be that as it may, it's up there for you. And then also released this week, uh, reissue wise, is this the Toyota Corolla uh, GT DX kits from 1979. Where again, best car vintage. You do have to do some mold, some emblem trimming uh, because this kit is from the 1980s originally. Uh, I'm not sure which way it actually builds up effectively because there's like four versions of this kit, and several of them were. Uh, they added a grill, they added some headlights, they added some wheels and things like that to make it into the other trim levels. Uh, I think the GT might be the way that came originally. I have to go back and look, but I don't care. Uh, but anyway, those kits the back out. That, by the way, is a one-body, uh, you know, one-body type of kit. It's not a, uh, like the, uh, Various kits we've seen with the, like the, the President and the Infinity where there's two bodies in one kit. This is just a one body trim is the difference kind of deal. And then the one new, if you will, kit that was released. This was actually a February kit that just came out. And that is the Nissan Toronto. So you look at this and go, hey, it's a Pathfinder. Which effectively it is. Although it was sold as the Toronto in Japan. The one very, very interesting piece to this. And... Uh, talking to Jonathan and said it's almost like a slap in the face, is the fact that this kit has a parts runner in it that has not been in these Toronto reissues as far as I can tell. I didn't actually pull mine out to look at it, but I don't think, but based on what looking at other instruction sheets, this kit has the Pathfinder wheels as well as the Pathfinder grill. Here in the United States, our grill on these kits was didn't have a Nissan B30 logo in beside the driver's headlight like the box art kit had. It was a Nissan logo in the very, very center of the grill, and we ran a different set, different rim style here in the United States. For the first time in what seems like forever, they've included that grill and wheel set in this kit. The kit always has had the left-hand drive components in it because those just carried over with every Toronto release. It was just grayed out on the instructions. But there are still no Pathfinder decals uh, uh, available for this. <coughs> you only get the Toronto stuff. So that is somewhat unfortunate. I think they could have really made some friends, as it were, had they just drawn up the Pathfinder things. Now, maybe that's a Nissan licensing thing. Maybe Nissan um, America, whatever the, the term would be here in the United States for Nissan, won't let them release the kit or wants too much money or there's something about it. But some entrepreneurial type person out there who really wanted to uh, make a couple of bucks. And again, this is another idea of why I would like to get Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator to do some decals for is doing some, because this kit and the Hilux Surf Wide, which is a Toyota 4Runner, uh, I think would benefit from, a, from you know, the correct decals, if you will, being done for them. Uh, this kit, by the way, does come with like a bunch of grill guards, and I, actually what looks like a what I call the Texas Bumper Grill, uh, that 
would be uh, the great big metal push bar uh, grill with a bull rack on the front of it that the uh, Land Cruiser Sport and the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport Tamiya kits have. Uh, roof rack. There's all sorts of extras for this kit included in it for the uh, really combined all together for the first time. And then it has the Pathfinder grills and stuff. Arr! It's almost enough to make me uh, want to sell the Toronto I actually already have and pick this one up because what I'm going to do with the Toronto is build it left-hand drive. Anyway, so... Ah, Ayoshima, you're so close to making my day, but not quite. And that'll take us to the last kit release for this month. This, again, a kit release was supposed to be out last month, but it is uh, struggling in this month. And that is this from New New Hobby, distributed distributed by Platts. Keep in mind, guys, this is not a Platts kit. Platts just paid for it. Hobby New New made it. Hobby New New, of course, is BMAX. So, Hobby New New, uh, offering you a two-in-one decal set here. Uh, this... But the actual car itself is the Blancpain uh, placarded uh, Team Italia 2016 three hours of Monza sprint race. I am somewhat disappointed in the fact that this kit actually has no new parts. Uh, I was expecting, because it is the sprint race configuration, that they would include uh, a piece of plastic, the shape of the fog light, driving light window, and you will put that in there. Because it would make sense, right? Because that's really the only difference in the car uh, is the fact that it doesn't have the driving lamps underneath the headlights, the endurance lamps. Uh, they just want you to either paint them black or put it. There's a carbon fiber decal in this kit uh, that uh, you put there. Could have done that with any of the other ones. This kit, by the way, does still come with the Nuremberg ring uh, fender vents for the front fenders. So... It somewhat makes the Nuremberg kit pointless other than the livery. Um, I don't know. I, I It's a weird uh, thing, I guess. I mean, at least, hey, there's another livery option out there for you. The background decal there, the the, the one with the Megler's uh, placard on it, is the 12 Hours of Bathurst uh, livery that, that is uh, obviously something that Frankie did. Frankie did the drawings for the actual decal sheet for this, uh, for the kit itself for BMAX, so good to see him get his little commercial work there as well. Uh, the one thing I will say that is very interesting about this kit in terms of the whoopsie in nature, uh, other than obviously it doesn't actually have any new parts in it, is the fact that uh, the instructions for the kit itself, as well as every online description I could find for it mentions the fact that this kit was, you know, they sold like, they've sold like 70 chassis for the M6, and it's raced all over the world, including in the German National Championship. Now, if you don't know what the German National Championship is, that's the ADAC Masters GT. Frankie, when he did the Schnitzer decals, which is what the Bathurst decals are, we also sat around and figured out something that would look just like those decals, but a little bit different, was the ADAC GT uh, livery for ours. ours. I'll, I'll say ours because I had a hand in, pick in, in, in doing the reference photos for that. Is for the Hockenheim version, which is a set you don't need the, wheel, the uh, fender vents for. Uh, that would be what the German National Championship is that they're referencing on... Frankie's actual decal sheet, it includes a little thing at the very bottom. I should have grabbed the decal sheet out to show you. But it includes a little bit of a bottom thing, which has the placards for ADAC Masters on it, as well as the specific associate sponsorships and the driver team that the ADAC Masters GT team used. They didn't include that in this kit. They chopped the bottom part of the decal sheet off when they redrew it to put it into the decal sheet. So you do get two... Uh, cars. You can either build it as the Team Italia car or as the car from the 12 Hours of Bathurst. Hey, it's the winning car from 2017. So, I mean, there's that. Or 2018, actually. Uh, so there's that. Like, it's a, you know, a cool other option. Don't get me wrong. But the decals talk about the ADAC GT Mastered version and they didn't actually include that. So, oops on them. Uh, the other thing that came out with that kit is this. The detail upset for it. Um... It's probably the most unnecessary detail upset ever, just because there's. I don't believe there's actually anything in here that is different from the any of the other detail upsets. At this point, all the detail upsets are, are the same. I will say that at least with the Nuremberg one, they fixed the current the color schematic of the the, the 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 carbon fiber. It's not that weird silver anymore. It's dark carbon fiber like it should be, and so. You know, it's, it's like all the other ones where the winglets, the tow hooks, and those 
driver netting things are only on the photo etch sheet. There are no injected plastic pieces for that. Hey, maybe hiding in here we don't realize that are the ADAC GT parts of the decal sheet. Maybe there's a licensing thing and they couldn't, and they had to tuck it in there. I don't know. I just think it's funny that they mentioned it and then didn't actually include that part of the decal sheet. Um, but it's another option out there for your M6 fans. Um, Frankie and uh, you know obviously has just done and just released the 2018 uh, Macau GF Macau GT Cup uh, Farfus driven championship car, the car that won the 2018 Macau GT Cup. Uh, he has another uh, couple of things planned coming out in the next batch of decals that are BMW, BMW M6 uh, based cars. One of the other uh, 2017 Macau BMW M6s, as well as uh, the Team Schnitzer car from the VLN series from last year. So many, many options for your M6. So it's always good to see them release this kit in other versions because that'll make it easy to, to find and pick up because I would expect at this point, this one may not sell that well once people realize that it's nothing different about it other than the decals. You gotta kind of like want one of those decal uh, options to buy that over anything else. But it is, again, I will point out very nice that they did keep the fender vents in that kit because now you have two kits that you can pull from to get the fender vents that have pristine windshields. This car does not have the goofed up uh, number boxed windshield like the uh, 24 Hours of Spa car has. So that, guys, wraps up this week. So we will see what we see in terms of, uh, you know, kit releases. Because it is going to be getting into the point in time here where uh, the next couple of weeks, uh, you know, we're half, more than halfway through March, that the, Jul the June stuff will have to be announced for pre-order, and that, at least for Hasegawa's sake, is probably going to include some of their new stuff. Uh, the Shizuka Hobby Show, at least within the terms of, for most companies, is a June, July, August, maybe early September type of time frame. And uh, that June... Uh, we usually get something out of Hasegawa modified reissue or something uh, that is definitively attached to the Shizuka plan. So they usually just dump everything uh, for their Shizuka show at the same time. That way you can order it all at once and pre-orders can show what will sell and what won't. Um, very interesting to see what Aoshima has planned um, in terms of tooling. Uh, we've never seen it, them do a second version of the Pro Box. They did the Pro Box with the God Hand anime tie-in, but... Uh, the way the kit is constructed, you could do the previous generation Pro Box. Um, I think it's probably too early to see another R34 variant at this point. The Mordor, the four door, uh, Mordor, the, the four door uh, R34. Probably too early to see another version of that. Um, but again, you know, like, what do they got? We know that there is that Pagani Zonda floating around out there. I don't know if that's going to be this year early this year late. They did say 2019. I'm I'm almost suspecting to see that more towards the fall. Because that usually be, tends to be when they do did all of their supercars. Their supercars always seem to be a fall release. The the early part of the year used used to be like a Japanese car. So when we saw the Toyota 86s and BRZ and things like that. So very, very fun to speculate and, and try to figure out what will be coming and uh, when to expect it and things like that. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the other side. Oh,